But anyways, this is the project that just rolled in. So as you can see, this is not a baby. I think this is off from a Volvo loader. I'm just not sure. It might be the uh, tilt cylinder. But anyways, I don't know if I can get lined up to where you can see it. But uh, they pressed a new bushing in, and I'll get behind it there. Oh yeah, see the daylight shining through behind the bushing? It's uh, not making contact from there, about around there. It's warmed out, so they want me to press the new bushing back out of there. And then this thing has got to get uh, welded board. All right, we're getting ready to work on that big cylinder project. The bushing was in there too tight to just drive out, so I'm making a pusher. This is, uh, I don't even know what, some kind of a serpentine belt pulley made out of cast iron I had laying around here off some old machine. And uh, anyways, I'm, uh, I've am i machined it with a uh, shoulder that fits inside the bushing so I know it lines up square and true. We're going to use it to shove the bushing out and then use it again to push it back in.
so I wasn't shooting any of this, and then Don and me might be interested in this. So I'm having trouble. Uh, how do I put this? So my no boring bar setup that I had was working quite right. I modified this boring bar, but I'm fighting problems with it because this one had a key or a hole through it at a 45 degree angle, and it's just giving me fits. My tooling is not set up for that. And I end up with too much tool sticking out. So I want one through at 90. So I, I've cross-drilled it with a pilot hole. Um, I've got my square brooch. And that requires a 25 64 pilot for a 3 8 uh, square brooch. And I've drilled the pilot hole and now I've flipped it 90 degrees. And I'm drilling and tapping for the set screw to hold the tool in. So anyways, just figured I would uh, show you guys a little bit of this excitement. It's a little bit sketchy because this uh, hole, of course, doesn't go all the way, all the way through. So we got to watch our P's and P's. So what I typically do... Close your eyes if you don't want to see this atrocity done, but I don't feel like going for a tap wrench to make two turns, so I'm going to grab the crescent wrench that I have here. Uh, I've done enough of this to know that it, uh, with a standard tap, you break through the last thread about half a turn before you hit the other side of your pilot hole. So. Do not dare take it all the way through under power. That's a guaranteed broke tap. All right, so this is already a little bit square broach now. Soon, but I'm going to hurry everybody, so you're going to have to uh, just put up with the hillbilliness of it. I just squared that up by eye, by the way. I've got tap magic all over this stuff, but just from tapping the hole, but... I don't trust that to be heavy duty enough to start broaching. These brooches are quite expensive. Strongly prefer not to break it just in case you were wondering. and not worried about the If you guys wanted to see a fight, you should have seen what it was like uh, when I was square broaching 4140 pre hard which is before I knew better what I was making my first few boring bars out of. That was a fight. Um, pretty much nail-biting, terrifying every single time, wondering if you were going to break the broach. Like I took the drill and the pilot oversize, and uh, it was an ugly project, but we got her done. All right, well, there it is, one square hole.
All right, we had an interruption. I got a panic call from my wife. She had started to try and cook dinner. Preheated the oven, got a cloud of terrible smoke out of it, and opened it up. And it turned out that Wiggles had put a bunch of his toys in the oven and played with them and forgot to take one back out. And my wife called with a plastic fire in the oven. So I had to go home and deal with digging all that out. Not very happy. Wiggles has got a serious lecture about him not being allowed to play in the oven, and hopefully that's the last time that kind of nonsense happens. So, anyway, we're now ready to try this again. See over there on the back side where it had worn into the eye, that darker band across there, and we're cleaning up completely now. Around this side, see if you can spot it. Yeah, you can see that whole uh, face across there where the pin had worn into the side of the eye, so we're looking good. We'll be ready to weld after this pass. All right, well, I'm cut oversized now. You can see it uh, left behind an uncleaned up section. The wear was more on this side than it was on the other edge, but uh, that's not life and death. It's not a huge cavity. I'm putting enough weld build up there in one pass that it should fill that in, and if for some reason I'm getting down to my finished passes and that section isn't cleaning up, I'll have to hand weld in there a little bit. But we're going to go ahead and run weld in it at this stage because it's 50 over on a side, which is what I'm after. So I'm getting ready to put down... Some sheet metal on my table so I don't uh, arc my table all to bits. And then uh, set up the bore welder and see what we can do with her. Alright, so I am set up. I've made a couple passes around in there. Um, this is some serious rigging. Normally, uh, this bore welder is designed to hang on the mounts for my line boring setups. <laughs> you can see we got some wood blocking and you name it. Horsing around getting this thing on the correct center line uh, to weld out this bore. Got a hunk of sheet metal on the table to protect my uh, mills table from spatter. And we're going to let her rip. So I'll kick her in here and you watch a little bit of this. Swipe through here, try first pass out. So I'll get the camera set up and we'll let you see what she does.
right guys, sorry I didn't get much more footage. I had some company drop in while I was working on this and pretty much impossible to run the camera and talk to somebody. So anyways, came out really nice. I put 10,000th press fit on this. Um, it's a five and a half inch bushing, so I've got just under two thou per inch, which is pretty much what I normally shoot for on a bronze bushing. Helps keep from walking out. I, I don't know what factory spec is on it, but anyway, that's what I gave it. Came out just great. Um, the only thing that's a little funny is that's enough press fit. This is a real hard bronze. I was having trouble getting it started, so I wish I could have shown you. But what I did, stuck this in lathe, and oh, for about 3 16 on the end, I basically just shaved off the 5 thou on a side that was the press fit. Took it to a pretty much size for size fit so that I had a pilot let me take a dead blow, get it started so that I knew it wasn't going to be shaven when it went in. And then went ahead and shoved it in there. So, anyways, came out real nice. Um, I would assume customer will probably come tomorrow and pick it up. And uh, tomorrow, I start on this. Uh, this is the one where that hole is wore out. That end's good. This is uh, H length for Cat 375. So, tomorrow we're going to be setting that up. You can see I got the uh, setup all broke down off from the boring mill and ready to accept that. You guys might have noticed I moved my A-frame over the boring mill. I was getting sick of trying to manhandle stuff on the mill, and I haven't really been using this uh, chain fall setup that much out in the rest of the shop, so I've just got it sitting over the boring mill now because I've got this H-link and then the one from the 345 to do, so we got lots of work to uh, keep us all occupied with for a while. So anyhow, that's pretty much it. I'll uh, show you guys some footage when we get started on this tomorrow.